Welcome back. Another Tech Tip Tuesday video in our summer series here. And we just want to remind everybody about our giveaway. So we've got one winner who's going to get a, a set of Joey's bow strings and cables for their setup, whatever bow that happens to be. And then one winner is going to get a their pick of broadheads from Vantage Point Archery. Make sure you head on over, check both of them out. Make sure you follow them on Instagram. All that stuff is in the description. And then make sure you like and comment on every single one of these videos in this series. So if you're just getting in on this series, make sure you go back and watch the, the other episodes. And then watch every episode after this through the end of September. Everybody that has liked and uh, commented on the videos, as well as subscribe to our channel, followed us on Instagram, follow VPA and Joey's Bowstrings on Instagram, they're going to be entered to win. So make sure you don't miss a single episode. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for clicking on another video for Tech Tip Tuesday. So on today's video, we're going to talk about where to sh properly place an arrow on a deer in different hunting situations. So obviously we all know that broadside, right behind the shoulder, is the, is the ideal place to where you wanna hit a deer. But, you know, that's not always the case. And then also what we're gonna address is, you know, where you might shoot a whitetail deer versus shooting a mule deer, and then the different type of situations on where you might wanna be holding at uh, based on the scenario. If the deer's coming in alert, and know something's going on or if it's coming in nice and calm and it's sitting there feeding while you were able to draw aim and take a good shot because we've all heard of duck and the arrow and we're going to address some of those some of those discussions right now you know for me personally this is something i struggle with um i shot a lot of 3ds growing up and i still continue to shoot a lot of 3ds and i think that that's the number one problem that we have right now is our 3d targets don't have the realistic placement of where you want to shoot a deer in real life. Um, you know, you're shooting for that 10, you're shooting for that 12, and it's cool when you hit it, but in reality, that would be a high lung uh, shot, and it wouldn't be that money heart shot that you want to take um, on an animal. And so we're going to address a lot of those, those type of the discussion points uh, today. Stay with us. And uh, like always, you know, make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment because, you know, there's not very many people that are doing that. And uh, so you could win yourself a custom set of Joey's Bowstrings or a broadhead of your choice from uh, Vantage Point Archery. All right, so like Chris said, we're going to talk about where to aim on a deer today. So we've got our handy dandy little fake deer here, a little 3D target, and we'll talk about why you know, some issues with this and why we want to talk specifically about the aiming. That being said, we'll go ahead and kick this off. So first up, we're going to talk about the broadside shot. That's going to be, you know, the most ideal shot that you're going to have in the field is to have a broadside shot. Looking here at this target, you can see, you know, you've got this, the core here with, the, you know, the make-believe vitals. But what we're looking for on the an actual deer is that vital V. And you hear people talk about that all the time. And so what that is, is if you follow the leg up here, you know, come up and you've got the shoulder blade to kind of cut sand back like this, right? So you got that shoulder joint and then the shoulder blade that kind of comes back in over here. And what to talk about is that V that comes down in here and then right in that vital V and that notch is where you have your, your, your main organ. So you got the lungs and you got the heart all right there. And either one of those shots, a double lung shot or a heart shot, is going to be what you want on a, on a deer. Well, on, on any big animal. So specifically for the whitetail, though, we're talking about this little spot here. One of the things that I always try to look at is, you know, getting into the, that low section of that V. And the reason being is, you know, we talk about jumping the string. Um, we talk about the, the, you know, the deer duck the shot, those types of things. That's that spot that we're really looking for here on the, on the deer, is that vital V. I like to aim low, because if that deer drops, I want to be able to get that shot in there. I don't want high lung, I want it right in the lung, or ideally right in the heart. Um, I don't worry about it so much with, the, with archery, with hitting the, that heart shot, because I don't really do a lot of damage other than lacerating the heart. And that's okay, because I can still eat it. Whereas if you're shooting a rifle, you're gonna blow out that heart, so. Anyway, that's just a personal you know, shot placement thing for me so that I can save the heart for eating purposes. So, on the broadside shot, it's pretty simple. You're just going to be shooting straight on the deer, and it's going to go right out the back in the same spot, roughly, that you're going to hit 
from the, uh, the front. So that is one of the key factors that we're going to talk about throughout this little this section, this discussion today, is exit, right? So here, we said we're going to hit here in, the, in this vital V, and that notch in the shoulder blade comes out the back, roughly the same area. Now that's if you're on the ground, right? So why does that exit matter? It's because if I'm going to shoot from a tree stand, I'm going to be elevated. And it also matters depending on which way the deer is t facing if he's not completely broadside to you. So that being said, I have to shoot for where I think that exit is going to be um, on the path of the arrow. So if I'm hitting down, if I'm trying to hit like a parallel to the ground, and I'm hitting it in that spot right here, elevate the back end of that arrow up and look and see where that exit is going to be. It's going to be real low if not coming out in the brisket. You have, and if that's a high, higher shot and you're not hitting the heart, you have a good chance of missing that backside lung. You're going to have a one lung situation, which is not necessarily a good thing. Deer is more than likely going to die, but you may have a harder tracking job. You may not be able to find that deer. So on those cases, it's more advantageous to aim higher up you know, on the deer on the, on the shot, on the, on the impact side, so that you can hit high lung on that side and then come out low lung on the other side. And then you still have a double lung shot. So that's why it's important to pay attention to that exit. So the next thing, Let's talk about those quartering two shots. So this is where the deer, so if I'm the, if I'm the deer and I'm facing broadside to you here, and if I turn my body 45 degrees or any, any degree towards you, I'm now quartering to you. This is where it's always gonna be the most important with those exit shots. So again, if I put that arrow in that vital V and I'm level to the ground as if maybe I'm shooting out of a blind, and now I turn that arrow 45 degrees and I follow that path I'm looking at back here maybe if I'm lucky liver but a lot of times good chance you're gonna end up in the guts back there and then that's a bad day all right so you might get that one lung you may get real lucky and nick the heart but uh, when you when we're talking about those elevated shots which most of us are shooting on whitetail we're talking a 45 degree angle up here high you may hit one lung and come out. You may miss completely. You may hit that void up here on this side and come through the guts over here. Yeah, that deer is probably going to die, but it's going to go septic and it's going to take, you know, an entire day for that deer to die and it's going to suffer. So again, on this one, it's important to really think about where that, uh, the shot placement, not just on the impact side, but on the exit side. So that being said, I'm going to have to more than likely, depending on you know, the angle that that deer is quartering, I'm going to have to adjust, you know, forward and maybe significantly depending on how hard it's quartering, maybe not so much. Now the piece that, you know, on the impact side I'll discuss is, you know, that shoulder blade. So with Chris and I's arrows, we're shooting a heavier setup. My arrow setup specifically 200, or I'm sorry, 600 and, you know, 37 grains with 200 of that being the broadhead up front and the 50 grain, you know, out, half out cert on the, in, on the front. Same with what Chris has on his. Now he's shooting 150 grain broadhead on his. That still, both his arrow and my arrow set are gonna go through that shoulder blade no problem. So I, I personally, and there's plenty of criticisms out there of this, and people who say that's not the case, but I've seen the evidence of it myself, and I'm a believer, which is why I shoot these arrows. I'm comfortable with taking that you know, dead center shot on the shoulder blade based on the exit. So if I have an angle where I think that I'm gonna be able to get double lung, um, or maybe even get lucky and get a heart shot on, you know, on it, I can, by aiming a little bit lower, but ideally on this type of shot, you're gonna want that double lung shot. I'm comfortable with hitting, you know, a little bit farther into the bone, go through that shoulder blade, through both lungs, and out the, and out the, uh, the back side of the deer. Same thing with the elevated shot, you know, still hitting up high on the top of that, that shoulder blade and blowing through both of those lungs. Now, if you have a lighter arrow set up, it may not be the case what you want to, that may not be the you know, type of shot you want to take. So this is where you got to get real careful about the shot placement. So if it's not quartering real hard, you may be able to just tuck it in, you know, right at the edge of that scapula. So that's where it's important to understand when you're looking at an actual live deer, that crease that you're going to get that causes that V that you'll see. And you can see it on the deer. And understanding what that little crease is 
and I'm trying to really tuck that arrow in up against the bone so you can get in on that front side long and still hit the back end of the, the, the back side long without getting into the guts. If that deer is quartering you know, a little harder to you, this is where you can try and sneak it in in front of the shoulder and get it you know, down in through um, both lungs. So we hit the front of that front side lung and then definitely hit the back side lung. So this is, that's gonna be a little bit more, little bit more difficult because you're gonna get heavier bone up in this area of the deer. Now with those elevated shots, depending on how elevated you are um, or how far the deer is, it's gonna change that angle as well. You know, getting that shot up here and really getting down behind the shoulder can be a little bit easier. So there's your quartering two shot. Now on the quartering away shot, you got it's the same type of uh, theory. But now I'm looking for how, where am I going to get that exit on that shoulder? And the difference here is, regardless of your arrow setup, you're going to you know go through the vital organs before you hit that shoulder blade. So again, with my arrow setup, Chris's arrow setup, more than likely we're going to blow through that shoulder blade. With lighter arrow setups, more than likely it's going to stop on the shoulder blade. Maybe, maybe not. That being said, I'm looking for hitting back here, you know, on that last couple ribs. I'm going to try and miss hitting the guts back here and get right in front of it. So maybe like three ribs up you know, from the back and tuck it in there and going through the back end of that lung and then in through the front side of the back side lung and into the shoulder. On this one, my personally, I wouldn't necessarily worry about that shoulder blade. I'm worried more about getting into the front side lung and, and getting that double lung shot. Because again, like I said, even if it goes all the way through and it stops on that shoulder blade, it's gonna lodge in the shoulder blade or blow through it. So it's really, I'm making sure I miss the guts you know, on the backside here instead of uh, you know, the, rib, the, the lung. So again, I'm gonna aim for that rib cage and you'll be able to see that rib cage here and come about three ribs up and you're gonna lay that right in there. All right, and again, you know, depending on whether you're shooting from blind or from an elevated position, you know, understanding that angle. So for this, the ribs, you don't really have to worry so much about, you know, the uh, that heavy blade, shoulder blade or, the, or the, the bone from the shoulder joint. You know, if you hit a rib, depending on your arrow, it may go through the rib or it may deflect off the rib. Regardless, if you can sneak it in between two of those ribs up there, and, like, you, you'll be fine. You'll go right through. Um, what you have to be careful of is hitting through this void up here above the lungs and one lung it through the back side here. So you always have to, like with the elevated shots, regardless of what angle you're shooting from, you always got to kind of watch, you know, you don't get too high on there and hit that void and miss the lung on the front side. Let's talk about the frontal shots. And I know this is a controversial one. Um, this is something that Chris and I are pretty comfortable with by and large, but it is still a tricky shot and you have to be very comfortable in your accuracy. The tendency of most people is going to be is to shoot high, all right? And especially with, you know, the deer ducking, you know, whether it be ducking the shot or jumping the string, whatever it is you want to call it, it's just kind of natural to, you know, aim a little bit higher in, the, in this front neck area here. However, you need to get low. Because if you think about, you know, if I'm looking here where that heart is, because really it's going to be tough to get a double lung shot. So you want to get down into that heart and do massive trauma in, in, in there. Maybe I'll clip a lung as well. Maybe clip a lung in a river good chance you're going to get into the guts a little bit but you're going to do a lot of damage up in the front core area of those organs. What you think about that is that's low down here in the brisket and getting in there so you want to really aim on that lower side there maybe even almost where the white is on their on the fur so that you can get when if that deer does duck a little bit you can get in there. The other problem with ducking with these with the deer or any of these big animals is they're going to, they're going to duck and whirl so if they're facing right at you and they, and they hear you or see you or you know, something happens that they're spooking on it, whether it's just jumping the string or not, they're gonna duck and whirl. So you, that's where it's also important, making sure one, it's low, but then understanding where, by watching the movement of the deer, where do you think that deer is gonna, is gonna whirl to? So if that deer whirls either way, you wanna be able to have a good shot coming in here, not up in the neck, or back here, or missing completely, but you want to be able to miss that aiming point, but then have the deer turn into the arrow. And that, honestly, 
with this type of shot, I wouldn't take it over 20 yards. That's just, especially with a, with a, uh, um, a white tail, because they can just jump so the string so heavily. If you, anybody that's been hunting white tail long enough, they've seen how these deer react. That's really going to determine, you know, in your judgment, whether or not you should take that shot. All right, folks, there you have it. That's the uh, wrap up of, the, of our aiming video, which is the wrap up of our series. So, really hope this was a helpful little um, video for you today. You know, to, uh, kind of close out what we're doing here with this uh, Tech Tip Tuesday series. A lot of information here, so you know, encourage you to kind of go back, take a look at a couple of those clips, and then uh, do some research on your own. And then think about that next time you're in the field. You know, when you're looking when you're looking at some animals. You know, whether it's be scouting or you're, you see some deer on the side of the road, take a look and see what we're talking about with some of the visualizations that we discussed here. And then also practice, you know, these different types of shots on if you have a 3D target in the backyard, you know, take some of those different angles. You know, if you have an ability to get up in a tree on a saddle or a hang on, you know, try some of those elevated shots. So it's good to practice these different types of things because that's the type of stuff you're going to see in the field. It's not always going to be a perfect, you know, 20 yard broadside shot. Deer stand, stand there, stick that front leg out and get you a nice little shot in that vital V. It's not reality. So, which is why we're talking about this because we think it's important and we've made plenty of mistakes in the past and uh, this is a great opportunity for us to share the lessons that we've learned and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes. Thanks for watching guys and uh, make sure you hit that like, hit that subscribe and uh, keep coming back and watching. Appreciate y'all. Thanks.